Tervitus taas Armsaat TV7 vaatajad. Täna siis viimast korda antud saatesarja Vabadus Kristuses raames saame veel olla teie ees. Täna on kümnes ja viimane osa. Ning meie plaaniks on siis vaadata korraks kokkuvõtvalt, et kuidas me siis peaksime oma elu ikkagi elama, mida me võiksime silmas pidada, mis on Jumala tahe meie jaoks, et me tõesti võiksime olla viljakandvad jüngriit Jeesuse Kristuse jaoks. Ma küsiksin Alani käest nüüd sisse juhatuseks ühe küsimuse. Alan, it's all about freedom in Christ, isn't it? Can you please wrap a little bit up for us? What was this course about? Yeah, the, the, the key for this course really is for you to become fruitful disciples in Jesus. If you, we've done a foundation course uh, on this series, but there is uh, it, there's more teaching and it goes a bit deeper and discussions. And so we get a lot of truth on the course. God's word is based upon God's word. But then there is a, a turning point where you have freedom day, uh, which is really uh, incredible and, yes. and amazing time. And then after that, we build uh, stronghold busters and help you with that and then you move, can move forward into becoming uh, uh, free and maintaining that freedom so that you'll be fruitful for the kingdom. Mm. Amen. Yes, um, please, can you share us a few of the principles how actually we should live our lives now on when we have yeah, studied be... something? Sure, it will be my pleasure. Thank you. So what's next as we come to the end of the course? What, what is next for you? Well, what we want is for you to make freedom uh, a way of life for you so that you can walk in the freedom that Jesus gained for us. But we have to do our part in that. We have some principles that we've taught and we want them to not just fade away. We don't want this to be a course where you, you do something uh, that's really nice for 10 weeks and then you forget about it. And then a year later, you can't even remember what was taught. What we want you to do is instead to grasp hold of the materials, understand what, how important it is to take hold of your freedom and then why it's important to maintain that freedom because then you will become mature disciples of Jesus. You will become fruitful disciples for Jesus and his kingdom will uh, be growing through you. There's a few keys. We looked at knowing who you are in Christ. We looked at the truth, didn't we? We looked at many, many Bible scriptures in this, in this course. So you must know who you are in Christ. The next thing we looked at really was how to, you've got to resolve your personal and your spiritual conflicts, your battles. You've got to figure out what they are. You've got to turn away from those things. And then the transformation is done by the renewing of your mind, which is in Romans chapter 12. We must renew our, renew our minds with the word of God. And that's it. And so we want you to really uh, go away from the course and, and think about the next steps. What will happen for you? What about your life? And we're going to look at eight short principles here. I'm going to teach on the first half and then Alice will look at the, the second half of these. So I think the first one is that success comes from having the right goals. Success is about achieving goals. We feel successful don't we, if we achieve a goal, but we have to be successful in God's terms. And to do that, it's important to understand what um, life goal that he has for you, those goals that he has in your life, if you understand what they are and you move towards them, when you're successful in them, you're, you're doing exactly what God wants you to do. Nobody and no situation can stop you from becoming the person that God, in, God intended for you to be apart from yourself. It's up to you. We, we learn in 2 Peter 1, 3 that we have everything we need for life and godliness. God has already provided it in Jesus for us. So God's goal for our life is more about building 
our character. So more like, what are we like as people, not what do we do? You might be a, a worship leader or a teacher or you, you lead the Sunday school for, for children, all amazing things. But it's not just about what you do, because you can do those things and still have a, a heart that is hard towards God, a heart that is, 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 is not healthy, is not growing. And, and so it's more about your heart and what you are like as a person than the things you do. We need to grow in character. 2 Peter 1, from uh, verse 5 to 8 says this, Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's goal is to become more and more like Jesus in character. Then we will act like him, we'll think like him, we'll be like him and the things that we'll do will represent him well. Nothing can stop you from being the person that God's planned you to be. God doesn't measure things you know, we all have different skills and talents and he's not measuring those things. He, he's measuring our character in the things he's given us to do. Negative emotions like anger, depression or anxiety can be warning signs that we've got unhealthy life goals. So we've got to get our goals in line with what God wants for us. The next point I think really is that significance comes from a proper use of time. We've got to use our time well. And you, you think things over time get forgotten if they don't have much significance. But what is remembered for eternity is of great significance. So what we must do is focus on things that have eternal significance and focus our time and our energy and our efforts on those things because they lead to uh, great satisfaction um, and great significance for us as we do something that affects eternity, not just what affects me here and now. The third thing is that fulfillment comes from serving others. Jesus was fulfilled by doing the will of the Father. John 4, 34 says this, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So of course we do work, for him, we do do things. He's given us these different abilities and we're to use them to serve others, to serve him. And somehow as we do this, we get fulfilled. Our lives have fulfillment as we do the things he's asked us to do. And these things can come right where you are. You don't need to change church to go to the, the best church in town. You don't need to, you know, some people at times even think, well, actually, you know what? I, I don't like my wife or my husband anymore. I'll, I'll just divorce them and get a, a better wife or a better husband. No, we're not meant to do these things. We're meant to see where God has placed us, stay where we are, grow in maturity and serve God with all our hearts uh, and we will do well if we do that. You know, you're unique. Each one of us is unique. Our circumstances are unique. We have different families, different jobs, different places we go. So our lives are important and significant. And wherever we go, we want to remember that we are ambassadors for Christ. And that's exactly what you are. God wants us to be ambassadors for Christ, reflecting Jesus really as if Jesus was here. When you get to heaven, I don't think God's going to ask you why you weren't perhaps Billy Graham or a famous evangelist or preacher, but he might ask you, why weren't you you? He's created you to be unique. He wants you uh, as you are, but growing into Jesus' likenesses. And he will have many things of significance for your life. And then the fourth and final thing I was going to just talk about today was that, that satisfaction comes from the quality of life that we have. 
Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. If you want to be filled, we hunger and thirst for righteousness. And nothing really satisfies except from living this holy life with God. All these other things that the world shouts at us, they, they break. They, 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 they're, they're lies and, and they're not going to bring you that satisfaction over the long term. You know, things break, don't they? They malfunction. They, things run out. Uh, you know, even the most precious watch that's handmade or a precious car that's ma made beautifully by craftsmen, over time it's still going to rust and break. So satisfaction is a quality, it's an issue about quality. And personal satisfaction, I think, is found in doing things well for God. That's where we'll find our satisfaction. If we just do too many things or we don't do them with the right heart, then we won't truly be satisfied. But if we can walk close with our God, growing to be like Jesus with his goals for life, we will be satisfied and our lives will have eternal significance. And that sounds like good news to me. Facebook might say you've got hundreds of, of, of friends, even thousands of friends, but Jesus focused on 12 and they were his deepest relationships. And I'm sure if you think about that and the quality of life that Jesus had with those people, he, he wants quality in your life and satisfaction in your life and he can provide those things for you as you follow his life goals. Time for some questions. Alan, thank you. You were sharing such a good principles. But let me ask you, is there any principle that you have followed in your life which is very close to you, very important to you? Yeah, I think as a pastor, it's really important that people grow. Yes. You have, you know, you have your sheep and, and you see them um, and, and some grow and, and others don't. And, and the desire of our heart is to see everyone um, being transformed, everyone being, being these fruitful disciples. That's really, really important to me. And so I think all of the principles, you need to kind of all of them to put them together to see that actually, you know, we can get growth in people. We can see breakthrough. We can see change in people's lives. No matter what they've been through, they can get their freedom. And that's the most important thing to me, that people understand they can be free. And then we give them tools that are going to help them to maintain that freedom, which is really important. So it's kind of, I didn't answer to one specific one, but I think the combination of all of those are, are, are vital. Yeah, I know how important it is for you to really make disciples, as Jesus says, and, yeah. and I think you're, you're really doing it very well. Aga nüüd armsatele vaatajat, vaatame veel ära tunnistuse. Hi, my name's Robin Murphy. I have come from South Africa and I had an anger problem when I was younger. I, I was such an aggressive little child really and it hurt me, it upset me. Afterwards I was just so broken and it's gone on for a long time in my life. However, when I came to know the Lord, I actually went and did the course, The Freedom in Christ. The Freedom in Christ helped me so much with reference to my anger and I still continue to walk diligently with the Lord but yet the anger was still there. This continued and then I moved from uh, South Africa to England and when I got to the UK um, got married to my lovely wife and this anger problem existed but then I did the Freedom in Christ again. And after I did the Freedom of Christ again, the anger problem was, what can we say, it was there. But yet this course helped me, helped me to understand how I should speak to people, um, how I should behave as a Christian. And then I did it a third time. And I can honestly say that even though I might have done it three times, I was still growing closer and closer to God. But after I did it again, it really has inspired my life and I've learned so much more about just being humble 
and just resting in the Lord in so many things. The wonderful thing I can liken it to is sometimes you're driving down the road in a car and you see the people in front of you and you can see the situations and the things that are coming up in front of you. The same as in life. We go through life and we have problems and difficulties and people come across our paths and want to make us angry. But the wonderful thing is that you're walking with the Lord. And the important thing is we need to look forward. We mustn't look back. Because it's like into, when you're sitting in a car and you're looking in the rearview mirror, the rearview mirror is so small and that our past is gone. It's our future that's what's important. But we need to walk it with God. And as Jesus just walked the earth and he was so humble and many times he was so quiet, he just at one stage he just sat on the step and he wrote in the sand and I have been humbled and this anger problem is gone in Jesus name and I thank God for that fine it might raise this little head but I know how to deal with the anger I'm so thankful that I have done the Freedom in Christ course because it has enabled me to be free but I am free in Christ and that's the key we all are free but we are free in Christ amen no nii alan juba jagas teile mõned prinsiibid mida siis oma elus silmas pidada ja natukene tahaks ma, ma ka sellele veel lisada esiteks ehk siis püüda vastata ühele väga väga tähtsale küsimusele mis on õnn Ma tundub, et see on vist kõige olulisem küsimus üldse sellepärast, et see on see, mida me kõik taotleme, kuid mis on siis õnnelikuse salatus. No maailmaviisid nüüd totaalselt põrkuvad sellega, mida piibel meile õpetab, mäletate. Me oleme rääkinud mitmel ja mitmel korral siin, et mis on see, mida maailm meile pakub. Ta ütleb sulle, et õnn on siis kui sul on olemas kõik see, mida sa tahad, kui sa saad kõik selle, mida sa tahad. Eks mõletate, meil on kolm kõige põhilist, kõige põhilisemat igatsust, meie eludes väärtustunne, kuulvustunne, turvatunne ja maailm tõttab kibe kiirelt seda siis nii rahuldama. Ta maalib sulle pildi siis kõige uutematest trendidest, kõige kiirematest autodest, ja muu siis, mis kõik tõotab sulle suurt vabadust. Aga tegelikult lihtsalt juhatab sind petudeele. Tõde on selles, et mitte kunagi pole maailmas olnud seni veel nii palju asju, kuid nii palju õnnetud inimesi. Mis siis piibel ütleb meile? Milles see õnn peitub? No loeme. Esimene siis Timoteuse kiri 6.6.8. Ent Jumala kartus on suur tuluallikas, kui inimesele piisab sellest, mis tal on. Ei ole, ei ole me ju midagi toonud maailma, nii ei suudame ka midagi maailmast ära viia. Kui meil on aga elatist ja ihukatet, siis olgu neist meile küll. Ehk siis sellega püütakse meile öelda, et õppime hindama neid asju, mis meil juba on ja me olemegi õnnelikud. Mida veel võiks oma igapäeva ellu kaasa võtta? Näiteks rõõm. Kuidas oleks rõõmuga? Piibel õhutab meid rõõmustama, elama hetkes ja seda ka väljendama. Taavet oli nii õnnelik. Seaduse laeka tagasi saamise üle, et ta seal hüppas ja kargas oma linases õla rüüs. Ots on see riietus, millega siis kuna kavalikus ette ei mindud tollal. Ja no. Vaatame taavetit. Seda ei huvitanud. Absoluutselt. Mitte üks kram, mida teisest, teised temast arvasid. Tema rõõmustas Jumalas, Jumala jaoks ja tantsis talle. Et, ma arvan, siin on hea prinsiip, mida oma ellu kaasa võtta. Piibel ütleb õpetussõnad 29-25. Inimeste kartmine pane püünise, aga kes loodab, issanda peal on kaitstud. Et me ei pea midagi kartma, me võime rõõmutseda ja rõõmustada ja teha need asju, mis on tõeliselt toredad. Kuidas siis on selle kindlustundega? Kindlustunne tuleb siis, kui me keskendume igavikulistele 
väärtustele. Nagu mainitud on see üks meie põhivajadusi, aga me leiame siis selle rahulolu tunde ainult Jumalas kindlust tunde, sellepärast, et see ületab kõik dimensioonid ja ajad ja ajastud, milline eesõigus sõbrad on selles, et me ei pea muretsema homse pärast. Johannese 10.27.29 ütleb Jeesus, et kui me oleme Jumalas, mitte keegi ei saa meid isa käest ära kiskuda. Meil ei ole enam turvalisemad kohta. No ei ole olemas. Kuidas on rahuga? Oled sa üks nendest inimestest, kes oskab elada seesmise rahuga ja seesmises rahus. Johannese 14.27 ütleb, et ma oma rahu ma jätan teile. Oma rahu ma annan teile. Mina ei anna teile nõnda, nagu maailm annab. Tee süda ärgu ehmugu ega mingu araks. Rahu tõepoolest on midagi sellist, mida me peame teadlikult oma elus alal hoidma. Just nimelt sellepärast, et Kõik need olukorrad, mis meid ümbritsevad, me ei suuda nende suhtes üsna tihti mitte midagi ette võtta. Need on lihtsalt meie kontrollijalt väljas ja see võib teine kord olla üsna masendav, morjendav ja nukker. Küll mida me suudame kontrollida on meie enda mõtted, meie enda elud, meie enda emotsioonide maail ja selle kaudu me suudame alal hoida rahu endis ees. Kuidas siis on raskustega? Oi, meile ei meeldi need, mitte üks raas, aga isegi raskustel on teatud eesmärk meie elude jaoks. Ja ma tahan lugeda sulle kirjast, Jakobuse kirjast, üks, kaks kuni neli. Pidage seda lausa rõõmuks mu vennad, kui te saatute mitmesugustesse kiusatustesse, kuna te teate, et te ei usu läbi katsumine teeb teid kannatlikuks. Aga kannatlikus olgu täiuslik, et teie oleksite täiuslikud ja terviklikud, ega oleks teis midagi vajaka. Täpselt sama kinnitab ka Roomakiri 5.3-4, mis ütleb, et raskustest läbimine karastab meid, arendab meie iseloomu ja aitab meil igati muutuda Kristuse sarnaseks. Me teame suurepäraselt ja oleme kõik seda kogenud, et väljakutsed on üks osa meie elust, kuid suutlikus ja oskus siis nendega toime tulla on vajalik ja Jumal õpetab meile seda siin selles maailmas väga suurepäraselt. Me ei jää siin ainult õppida. Nüüd meil on selline nii-öelda inimlik kiusatus põgeneda. Põgeneda ebamugavastest olukordadest teise kirikusse, teises suhtesse. Oh, seal kirikus on palju parem ülistus, ma lähen sinna. Oh, ma lähen sinna töökohta, kus mind hinnatakse palju rohkem. Midagi sellist, on need tuttavad senaariumid. Ja loomulikult elus on aegu, mille me teeme muutuseid, aga me peame alati küsima, et mis on see motivatsioon selle muutuse taga? Kas see on korrektne? Sest paratamatult, Kui me lihtsalt oleme neid inimesed, kes jooksevad ringi paremale vasakule, nagu kogu aeg otsides midagi ja mitte millegagi rahul olles, siis meil tuleb arvestada sellega, et ebaküpsus jookseb meiega alati kaasa. Me ei saa seda jätta mitte kuskile. Nii et eestlastena meil on selline ütlus, et naabri aias on ju muru alati rohelisem. Kuid tegelikult mõtleme hetkes. Muru on kõige rohelisem seal, kus seda kastetakse. Amen, oled sa nõus minuga? Loodetavasti oled. Aga meil on veel väikene hetk nüüd aega arutleda küsimuse üle. Thanks, Alice, for sharing those remaining principles. Is there any one there or, you know, that you would, you would say has been helpful in your life? Which one do you, you know, grasp hold of and, and so on? Yes, principles uh, do matter because Bible is the book of principles, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I do have many different type of um, principles or sayings or verses from the Bible that has really spoke to me into 
into my life in different stages of my life. But if you ask like that, maybe the first one, I would say the latest one perhaps, I was reading the book of Ezekiel. And it's a book that is filled with prophecies and pictures and really weird yeah. stuff. But somehow I felt I want to go through this book really deeply, so I went through it verse by verse. And there was something that I noticed in this book. And it just spoke into my life. And it was God's instruction uh, for, for his people. Of course, there are many instructions in the Bible. But in this case, he said that you just, you just have to do what is right and just, basically. Okay. <laughs> Very simple. Summing up the whole book is... For yes. you, is, is doing what is right and what is just. Yes, and mm -hmm. uh, God repeats himself, and we need to know if God is repeating himself. It, mu it must be important, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, and also, within that, I try to put aside my emotions, I try to put aside my feelings, and for me, it's the most important thing is really to understand what the Word, is, word of God says first, yeah, and not to let... Um, intrude my own thoughts into this situation, but really to understand what God is saying and to do that first. So it's just my journey with God. I mean, everybody has their own journey, surely. But uh, yes, this is what is important to me. Yeah. And so what's next is, is the, the title of our, our last uh, show. And um, we just want that to be considerations for the viewers out there. You know, what is next? What is next for you? Um, so please pray about that. Think about those things. And uh, hopefully some of the things that we've, we've taught will, will, will be a guide and a help for you. No nii, armsat televaatajad, me olemegi jõudnud oma viimase osa lõppu. See on väga eriline aeg. Meil siin ühes koos selles armsas TV7 stuudius ja tegelikult kõik, mida me oleme soovinud, on panustada midagi omalt poolt teie eludesse. Ühte me saame silmas pidada. Kõik ühel hetkel paraku kaob ja see prinsiip võiks jääda, et ainus, mis tõesti loeb, on meie isiklik suhe Jeesuse Kristusega. Nii et ma julgustan siin nägema sinu elu taevasest perspektiivist, mitte elama lihtsalt ühel hetkele. Mulle meeldib väga, mida ütleb Heebrea kirja autor 13.14. Ma loen sulle selles, sest meil pole siin jäädavat linna, vaid me taotleme et tulevast. Nii et armsad sõbrad, hoia oma me fookuse alati paigal Jeesusel Kristusel ja jookseme usinalt seda meie poolt siis määratud võidu jooksu. On suur au ja eesõigus siin olnud olla koos teega. Ja armsad uute kohtumisteni palju õnnistusi ja kõike head teile. Äga meist! Armsad TV7 vaatajad! Vabadus Kristuses teenistuse eesmärk on aidata teha jüngriteks kõik rahvad ja täpselt samamoodi siin Eestimaal. Kuid meil on olnud suur au teha koostööd TV7-ga ja nad vajavad samamoodi teie abi. Nad vajavad teie palveid, aga nad vajavad ka teie annetusi, selleks, et eestikeelsed saated oleksid meile kõigile kätte saadavad. Me, nii et ma tahaksin ka julgustada teilt omalt poolt ja panustama midagi sellesse töösse ja laiendama Jumala kuningriiki siin väiksel armsal Eestimaal. Palju õnnistusi teile ja kohtumiseni.